Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Darren. I'm the educator here, the wildlife educator at Northwest Wildlife Preservation Society. And we're doing a bit of a live broadcast here. We're gonna be speaking about raptors. So definitely feel free to log on at any time and check us out. And you can also send us questions at any time throughout the broadcast. Our society does wildlife education programs throughout the entire Lower Mainland, as well as on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. We reach well over 10,000 individuals every year and we deliver about almost 300 programs, indoor, outdoor programs to all age groups, all citizens throughout those regions, and it's lots of fun. So today we're gonna to be speaking about raptors. So raptors are a large and diverse group of, of birds that actually are the birds of prey, okay? So they catch and kill their prey with their talons. If you think about it, no other birds in the world uh, use, their, use their feet to catch food. The raptors are the only ones that do that. So we're taking a look at, of course, the eagles, the hawks, the falcons, the owls, and then at a lesser degree, some of the old world vultures are distantly related to the typical raptors as well. Now, every other bird in the world, from an ostrich or an emu, flamingo, hummingbirds, they all procure food with their beaks and their tongues as well. So we, what we have here is we have um, several examples of raptors. We have these biofacts that we utilize for our wildlife education programming, both in the schools and out in the field. And we'd like to start off with this beautiful one right here. And this is a hawk. It's a perfect hawk specimen, actually. It's a typical hawk that people think of. That's the red-tailed hawk. Now, this individual, um, like some of our birds that we come across here, was actually um, a victim of a truck strike. So it was hit, and rather than having that just being left on the road where other animals might get hurt, this was brought to us and we had it beautifully professionally mounted so that we can teach about these incredible creatures. But if you take a look on the back side here, I mentioned red-tailed hawk. You notice what that tail actually looks like at this point because this is a juvenile. This is a young animal, so you still have that beautiful barring, the barred pattern. This, when the animal's about nearly, not quite, almost two years old, that will turn that beautiful brick red that people are familiar with. Now, some of the features, of course, that all raptors have, as I mentioned before, is those talons. Those wickedly sharp talons there, we've got one, two, three, and four. Generally, they'll hold those with a nice placement, three in the front, one in the back. Those are their killing tools. So they're just like a bear's claws, or a cougar's claws or a human fingernail. It is made of keratin, but much, much sharper. And their grip strength is incredible. It's like an iron grip. Thin, slender legs. And usually a lot of the times you can tell, you know, where, where a raptor lives, well, how much feathering comes down on those legs there. Very, very cold climate, they'll come down to there, of course, with the feathers. Very, very warm climate, the feathers will be much higher up the leg. Lots of raptors have nice yellow legs like that. The more yellow they are, orangish yellow the more healthy the animal is and as you can tell it is scaled so it actually shows a common distant ancestor with the reptilians it's quite amazing but if we get a close-up on the eye there the face of the hawk you'll notice that they have exceptional eyes wonderful tack sharp eyesight you probably heard the term hawk eye or eagle eye their vision is very very sharp and they don't have as many of the um, cones in their eyes for the color, but many, many more rods in their eye cells compared to what we have. So possibly we're in a beautiful setting here. If we were to look across, you can actually see the buildings and, and even the trees across there in Stanley Park at a distance. Those animals could easily see a small bird perched in some of those trees across the way in Stanley Park. They could spot a mouse on the ground from easily 1.5, nearly two kilometers away. So that's sharp, sharp vision. Now, the hawks are daytime predators, so they'll capture animals like mice and squirrels and rats. This one's quite diverse. In some of the warmer areas, it can even capture lizards and snakes, um, sometimes young marmots as well, even baby raccoons, so very cool animals. Now, if we were to compare that to a nocturnal cousin of the hawk, we have a prototypical owl there, and this one is the barred owl very very beautiful bird now these two can live and can hunt in the same area the owl does prefer a bit more of the thicker rainforest and go for similar food the difference is of course we have the hawk that's diurnal 
and the owl that's nocturnal. So they don't compete directly in the time frame of our um, during the day. If you also look near the eyes, you'll notice the little brow ridge that hawks have to deflect the sun away from their eyes, just like I'm wearing here today with my nice ball cap. <laughs> owls do not have that because they're nocturnal predators. So the owl's eyesight is sharp but not as sharp as a hawk's, but their nocturnal vision is far superior. So they can see in very, very low light levels. But even more extraordinary than the owl's vision, of course, is their hearing. Their ear slits are just behind where I'm pointing there, just behind that feather, and on the other side as well. And you know, right there. And you notice that beautiful facial disc. So all owls will have that nice little circular roundish facial disc to their head that will channel in the sounds towards their ears. Their hearing is very acute. So they can detect some things like a mouse or a squirrel's heartbeat. It has even been known and proven that they can detect beetles or small insects walking on the forest floor. So incredibly sharp hearing. Also another feature of the raptors that you will see in all of them is their beak. Okay, they have beaks just like all birds do. It's a defining feature of birds, very, very special and important. There's not a lot of other creatures that have beaks. You'll have some sea turtles that will show them, but most uh, birds, all bir birds have the beak in the bill. But in the case of the raptors, it's very, very sharp. So that's like their fork and knife. So they're gonna be tearing in to the food with that. They'll rip off chunks of meat and swallow that whole mouse, uh, uh, mouth sized. So if it's a large animal like a rabbit, they'll take off chunks of meat and swallow that. If it's a smaller creature like a mouse, they might just swallow that whole. No chewing involved because there's no mastication, there's no teeth. Just the beak, upper and lower, and it's very, very sharp. So you'll see that on all raptors. The other cool feature with the owls, many, many cool features, but right along there, if we get in really close, you can see how the edge of the primary feathers muffle there. There's little spaces in between that allows the airflow to flow over that and they're actually very quiet, silent flyers. It's amazing. Some people will say they've heard now a fly, mostly not true. <laughs> they're actually just feeling a bit of the breeze and they're seeing that animal, you will not hear them in flight, they're completely silent. Good. It's a fun little thing to practice if you're outside, maybe listening to the flight of a gull or a goose, much, much even a pigeon, much, much louder than something of a bird that size. Silent flyers, that's so they can hear their prey, and so their prey, which has very sharp hearing as well, the rodents don't hear them coming. So very, very amazing animals. Very soft feathers on both of these raptors. These birds are having in the neighborhood of four to five, almost 6,000 feathers. And with the hawk's wings spread out, you can see the flight feathers, the primaries and the secondaries in there, and the tail feathers. Now there's only about 50 or 60 of those, so most of those feathers are actually to keep the animal warm, okay? Just underneath there, and of course on the legs, you can see how thin the skin actually is. A little more protective in this area for, for things like snakes to avoid snake bites, especially in uh, typical snake-eating raptors. But the skin of these animals itself is very thin, pardon me. So they have to be able to keep warm with those thick insulating feathers, acting just like the mammal's fur. But that's another interesting feature of birds is that only birds have feathers. No other creatures do in our world, which is quite amazing. Now, we don't have a, a vulture or a particular bald eagle or eagle specimen here, but we have a third major group of raptors. This beautiful one right here are the falcons. Okay. Now, this is a large example of a falcon. It's actually the biggest in the world. So it is known as the jeer falcon. This animal normally inhabits the high Arctic parts of our country, and then especially British Columbia, much like the snowy owl, will come down into the lower mainland at times of, of plenty, and they'll be coming down in our winter. So generally the end of November, parts of December, January, even early February. Now, she, this is a female, is a very large example. She's <laughs> the size of this owl. Normally the falcons are smaller than the hawks, and they have much more pointed wings, which you can kind of see on her because they're built for speed. Many of you may know that the world's fastest creature in a dive course controlled is the peregrine falcon, which can attain more than 400 kilometers an hour. 
This particular Jeer Falcon can dive at more than 200 kilometers an hour, so still very fast, faster than most other creatures. It's quite amazing. All these birds, because of their feathers, are very, very lightweight. So they're very light animals. Her, all of them, in fact, their feathers actually weigh more than their skeleton. She is only three pounds. Look at the size of that body. This one is only a little more than a half a pound. And our hawk, which is quite a large bird, is only about two to two and a half pounds. That's it. So very, very lightweight. Incredible, you have to be lightweight. Also, okay, also displayed on a rock there because she does actually like to nest and perch in the high rocky alcoves there in the subalpine areas. If you also take a look, close look there at her beak, she actually has that nice little nodule there as well, which is known for most falcons. It acts almost like a little can opener to pop or break the neck of birds. These falcons are typical bird eaters, so they're very, very quick. Sometimes they could go for arctic hares, but the, yeah, um, the bulk of their diet are the, the ptarmigans and the grouse. Those are the kinds of creatures they like. You can also see by her pattern on the feathers how she likes to live in the high arctic. Generally white, these animals can go from nearly pure white to the nice gray markings there, which will blend into the rocky areas. So she's a really beautiful specimen. And as you can see with the other raptors, her back talons are very, very sharp. Get a good grip in there, it's incredible. Also underneath the parts of her feet, she has a little extra nodules to get an extra special grip on the animal in case it's slippery and trying to get away as most of the animals will struggle under that grip. So quite amazing animals. So a nice falcon, owl, and hawk. And then the eagles, of course, in our country, we just have the two eagles. We actually have more diversity of hawks and owls. But for the two eagle species, of course, we have bald eagle and golden eagle, and those would be much, much bigger birds, much, much bigger than the, than the hawk. Um, our eagles are rounding out about nine or 10 pounds. So even though that's a big raptor, seven foot wingspan, it's a little over two meters more than I'm stretching. That is a big bird, but still very lightweight. I also brought along, of course, another characteristic of birds, which really no other animal shares in a way, is hard-shelled eggs. Okay, of course, there are other creatures that lay eggs, but not hard-shelled like these ones do. All birds lay the hard-shelled eggs. Uh, I'm not sure if you can guess those, but we actually have the larger one here is bald eagle, to give you an example. The smaller one, any guesses, is barn owl, okay? Quite a great uh, a range there in size. These are the shapes of them and the rough colors. I know you guys on the web won't be able to feel these, but they're very dense. The bald eagle, for example, is a good four to almost four and a half times denser than a chicken egg. That's something you might have at home. And of course, these will be laid from, if I were to use the hawk as an example, from the vent. You can see how much smaller the hawk egg would be compared to that bald eagle if I place it right by the vent there. Birds, another feature you may or may not realize is they do have single openings, the vent there. So that's where the urates come out of, their waste, of course, and their eggs. Okay, not like mammals with the, with the dual openings. We also have their skulls, which are very strange and lightweight to see when you see them this way compared to the actual animal. So you see how many feathers they actually have on that when you take a look at the skull versus the actual animal's head. You can see that. And this is an example that I'm holding of a bald eagle, so you can see how much larger it still is than the hawk. But it shares a lot of those features. Of course, we can see the sharp beak, the nostril there, which are known as the nares, and you can see how that lower beak would open to about that point there. Also rings, the, the bony uh, ocelots around the eyes. So very, very good vision that holds the eyeball in place. They cannot move their eyeball the way we can or that other mammals could, but that will hold it in place so it gives them very, very detailed, sharp vision. And then that's that feature I was mentioning earlier with the nice little bone deflectors deflecting the sun away. So it's actually built in that where I'm pointing. Of course, it's just like my hat and it's that feature right there. So you can see there's no squinting needed on an animal. It's actually built right in to deflect that sun away. So relatively large, if you were to compare that to an owl, this particular one is a barn owl. Look at the size difference there. 
Same with the eyes. We have the bony core around there and they cannot move the eyeball within place so they will turn their head if they want to look at something or they sense something. Okay, and the head can rotate around about 270 degrees, so three quarters of the way. So their necks, owl's necks especially, are very, very flexible. They don't want to be moving around all the time, so they'll just move instead of the whole body, just the neck. And they're having about 14 bones in their neck, which is twice as many as humans. So if we looked at the neck of that owl, you see how small that area is. Imagine 14 little bones in there, so it shows you how flexible they really are. They can actually turn their head three quarters of the way, but also upside down in a fashion like that. That also helps them when they're doing something like that, right, to actually triangulate the sound. Triangulating sound is a pretty neat thing. And you can kind of see on the skull, but you see the ears are slightly asymmetric. We have the one usually on the right slightly higher than the one on the left. Okay, a little ear slip behind the eye. That allows the owl to be able to easily triangulate high and low, left and right, so that they can accurately grab where that rodent is without missing. The last thing you want to do is grab four inches away from an animal, miss that, and then that prey takes off on you. So they have very, very acute hearing. Very, very incredible animals. These skulls, again, are very lightweight. They're actually comparably way less than the eggs do. So quite amazing. Yeah. Are there any questions out there? <laughs> so wonderful, wonderful species. We have lots of different owls in our province. We actually have 15, 16 different species. There are more than 220 different ones in the world. So that is cool diversity. Our diversity of hawks is very good. We have some hawks that are much speedier bird eaters and we have some larger hawks that go for rodents. And we have a good portion of falcons as well, including the prairie peregrine falcon, the jeer falcon. We also have merlins and kestrels as well, which are small types of falcon. Very, very wonderful species. And then as I mentioned, the two bald eagles. And then we have our scavenging raptors, if you think of uh, turkey vulture and black vultures, creatures like that. Major difference is their talons because they're not making the kill. They spread out a little bit more because usually they'll be walking on the ground approaching dead meat. They also have very strong digestion, which is different from a lot of the other raptors. So a vulture, for example, can digest virtually anything that enters their system. At the complete opposite end of that would be the owls with very weak digestion, so they'll be bringing up the pellets. You may have seen in the field, in the wild, some owl pellets that are casted up. Those are the indigestible parts. They'll bring those up generally about twice a day, once every 12 hours. And inside those pellets is kind of amazing to look at, but you can break that apart and you'll see parts of their prey, such as bone and teeth and fur and feathers, and even some little scaly parts of what they cannot digest. So they can't even digest a, a squirrel's leg bone that much. Whereas a vulture can digest straight through a big bone like that, or some of the big vultures in Africa, you think of they can digest part of a wildebeest bone and, and other antelope. So a huge range. Owl's stomach acid is much, much weaker. Some of the hawks will cast up pellets as well, but they're a little more flimsy, so it shows their digestion is a little bit more potent than an owl, but nothing to the degree of a vulture, for example. Wonderful, wonderful creatures. So I hope you've enjoyed this session on the raptors. And of, of course, yeah, check us out on our website at any time. That's northwestwildlife.com. And feel free to send us any questions you have. Also, we, ha we post very often on our Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat pages. So check those out. And feel free to contact us anytime. We're always available to answer any questions. And if you'd like to book a program to have an in-class session or perhaps an nature walk out in our beautiful British Columbia, feel free to contact us anytime. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks for tuning in.